I know, I know. This is probably not the best gameplay, but I did want to show you some footage of me playing Guilty Gear with this controller to show you that it actually works. Because I had some trouble finding videos online about this specific controller and software. It's also the reason why I'm making this video. To guide and encourage newcomers who want to build something similar. Because it is incredibly cheap and really not so hard to do if you have a plan. In fact, this self-made controller works so well. From a handful of games, I've only lost a few. In this clip, I even got a rating upgrade. And this is only after 30 minutes of playing with this controller for the first time. But before we get to the final result, we gotta talk about where it started. It all started with this. If you have no clue what this is, it is a one-handed gaming keyboard. I tried very hard to like it, but I just didn't. The keys were too clicky, the feel too mushy, everything was just way too spaced and your hands couldn't really reach the buttons. I used this two-handedly for Guilty Gear and that worked quite well, but the software was still annoying to deal with and yeah, I could rant about this thing uh, forever. But anyway, that's a topic for another video. <laughs> After selling my Razer Tataris, I was stuck with a keyboard which felt way too cramped uh, and it just didn't work for me. So I started looking into other options like the Hitbox or the Snackbox Micro, which both look really nice, uh, but the price tag of 200 to 300 euros plus the shipping and the limited availability made it not an option. Other fighting boards on Etsy looked quite interesting, but they were still too expensive for me the thought of just building something like these people on Etsy crossed my mind. But as soon as I looked up the prices of these Brook circuit boards, I realized they were also in the realm of 100 euros. So I just kind of gave up at this point until I came across this guy. Uh, I present to you, this is my own... This is Wei Min Shan. After seeing this video and seeing just how cheap and DIY this thing looked, I was determined to build this myself. I'm not gonna lie, I was slightly worried that this will be a disaster because I've never done anything like this before. It definitely sounded like a challenge that would take me a couple of weeks or even a month to finish. But at this point I was determined to take on this project mainly with the intent of learning something new about all these different fields. I had some Cherry MX switches and keycaps laying around from my mechanical keyboard. I had an old Arduino Uno and some leftover Ethernet cables. All I really needed was a case to hold the switches. Since I don't have a 3D printer or know anyone who does, I decided to make everything out of wood, also because it's the cheapest. I actually thought I can just use an old box that I had laying around and cut through it with a cutter, but uh, as you can see that didn't really turn out very well. Um, everything just kind of fell apart and I'm actually kind of happy I didn't injure myself. <laughs> so I went to the market and got myself a 3mm thick piece of MDF wood sheet um, and a 1x2 piece of wood that I would use as a spacer in between the two sheets. Both cost me around seven euros. I actually ended up angling the side panel as for more of a comfortable experience while playing. I cut the wooden sheet with a cutter and the wooden side panels I was using a saw in combination with a chisel. I actually had to buy the chisel and a hammer because I didn't have one but I was sure that I'll be using those for other woodworking projects in the future, so I was fine with paying a little extra there. I used the chisel and a cutter to cut out the places where the switches go through. This was a very delicate task that required lots of precision and care. If one of those bridges break, I'd have to start from the beginning, which almost did happen. I also cut out a little spacer in the middle of the case to make the whole board more stable. 
As you can see, I also added a small opening where the cables come out. And I've also added a piece of foam I had laying around for sound dampening. At this point, I also decided to loop my switches as they would be soldered into the case. And yeah, it definitely makes for a more smooth and not so loud experience. The next step was to solder the switches. I was very fortunate that my dad had a soldering iron and some solder, so I went and picked it up. Basically, the wiring is very simple. You connect one side of the pin of your switch to every other pin with a cable. This is your ground pin. The other pin will be directly connected to the PCB via a cable. Like this, for example. You do have to make sure that the wires don't touch each other directly, otherwise you will get a short circuit. There's a lot of tutorials on the internet that use a bunch of stuff like resistors or diodes, but for this project we don't need any of this. It's really that easy. The most time intensive part was preparing the cables. It was quite a hideous task, but was necessary. Basically, if you use Ethernet cables for this project, you just cut open a cable and like fiddle out these <laughs> smaller cables. You cut them to the right length and remove the plastic part. You can use a wire cutter or a knife. Just make sure to not damage the wire or accidentally cut any wire off. It really helps to twist the cooper ends to make them straight. I also coiled them around the switch pin that made it a lot easier to keep them in place while soldering. It also makes it more stable. Also using tape to um, temporarily fixate the cables really helped them to not move around too much while soldering. To keep this video short, I cannot make this a soldering tutorial, uh, so for your own safety please look it up. But basically I was heating it up to 250 to 300 degrees Celsius. I also wore a mask for protection and frequently ventilated. And one more thing, I was um, soldering the ends of the copper wire that will go into the PCB uh, to make it more stable and I think it also helps to make it more conductive. That was it, soldering was done. I was ready to connect the wires to the pin inputs on the board. And this is where reality settled in. I could barely find any up-to-date information on this topic for the Arduino. There was no simple follow-along guide to this. Nothing worked, and I didn't know why. It could have been that I did a bad job soldering. Maybe the idea of the Ethernet cables didn't work at all. Maybe the cables were too thin, I had no idea. Maybe I needed resistors or diodes, and also, somehow I really thought I could hand code every little thing by myself, even though I didn't know how to code the simplest line of code. Eventually, my programmer friend came around to help with the coding, but even together we could barely get one button to work. Not even mentioning the problems of debouncing a button, and key rollover, delays, etc. I'm sure there are people out there from whom this is a easy task, but for me, the thought of actually playing Guilty Gear with this thing, not even mentioning to play on the Nintendo Switch, were so far gone and seemed impossible to achieve by myself. Until I remembered this original video that inspired me. And it turns out that his board is run by a firmware called GP2040, which sounded too good to be true in this moment. The software only runs on the Raspberry Pi Pico though, and I was delighted to find out that this board only costs 7 euros on Amazon. I bought it together with this breakout board, which has LED indicators if the buttons are working. You also don't have to solder the wires onto the PCB, which makes mistakes much more forgiving. This one cost me around 10 euros. It is not necessary though. After a week when it came, I simply plugged in my cables according to the wiring diagram and installed the GP2040 firmware. I honestly couldn't really believe how easy it was. 
There was a bit of tweaking necessary, but it took me about 30 minutes to get a working board. It just worked. And to my surprise, it also worked on the Nintendo Switch, which was just mind blowing for me. Here's a clip of my friend playing a round of Smash with me. It was entirely possible to play Smash with it. It might need some tweaking to get it just right, but it definitely works. I also tried Celeste with it, uh, which worked perfectly as well. Let's talk a little bit about the layout. I decided to add a space button for jumping, but keep the up key to more intuitively navigate menus and perform other specific options. I also added a shift button for dashing in Guilty Gear. On the right are eight buttons corresponding to the X, Y, A and B buttons and also the L1, R1, L2 and R2 buttons. At the top there's just uh, the plus button on the Nintendo Switch and the home button, but it mostly functions as a select and start button. Honestly, the greatest joy of this project was to have my own layout that perfectly fits my hand size and perfectly fits the games that I play. And I want to encourage you to do the same for the games you play and to be creative with your box and your materials that you use and um, either try to make it as cheap as possible or make it in a certain style or whatever. The options really are limitless and um, I really want to thank the GP2040 Discord server at this point because they um, really gave me hope when I thought that I couldn't finish this board and yeah, they helped me out with the software. I had a few questions and they immediately welcomed me and um, helped me out. And yeah, it's open source and it's just an amazing um, project and a great community. So I, yeah, I spent less than 20 euros building this board and I, I really recommend doing something like this if you want to do it um, because you learn something new and um yeah you can play your favorite game on your own controller i mean that's fucking that's fucking amazing man thank you for watching this video and make sure to share it around for anyone of your friends who are also interested in this um feel free to subscribe there is absolutely nothing coming <laughs> but um who knows who knows what's gonna come I like building things and I don't know, maybe I'll make another video on something else. I wish you a great day and uh, see you later.